Hello, hello, friendo. So, funny story. <laughs> the last episode, I ran a promotion uh, for a free Amazon uh, gift card, and no one actually won because everybody missed one crucial step. So, no one submitted the form on rumorcast.com. So, <laughs> we're going to run it again, and this time, that's the only requirement. That's it. So if you want a shot at a free $25 Amazon gift card, just head over to rumorcast.com, click on the speak link, and tell me what's on your mind. And you'll be your email will be entered into a free drawing for some dope Amazon loot money. So yeah, head over to rumorcast.com, click the speak link, and tell me anything. I don't care what it is. Whatever's on your mind, just speak it. And you'll be entered to win. So... I got another good episode. This time we're sitting down with Chris to discuss not only playing guitar, but also performing and teaching. So chop, cut, and loop it. Let's go. You know what I heard? Spill it. I gotta know. I think it could be true. Can you believe what they just said? That can't be true. Tell me more. Have you heard? They said what? Do you believe everything you hear? is rumor cast yeah everybody sounds <laughs> different when they're recorded chris and we're recording now by the way good good um hi good evening good evening good evening um yeah, the sound of my own voice sounds, is that weird it's always weird man like when i sit down <laughs> to think about this is what other people hear me sound like but i wish they could hear me sound how I sound in my head, right? Which is glorious, right? Right. I know it, <laughs> it resonates different in your own head, and you think, "Oh man, yeah, no, I got a cool voice." And then it gets recorded, and you're like, "Well, my voice sounds dumb. <laughs> why, do, why does it sound that dumb?" And everyone else is like, "No, dude, that's how you always sound. You always sound dumb." <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're just not thinking about it, and they just agree with it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if that's what you really are. <laughs> So, right. yeah, no, I'm glad you decided to do this, man. That's great. Yeah. Um, it was funny that you just happened to be next door. That was weird. To a friend of mine. That was super awkward. I was like, I know that dude. Oh I should have just looked the other way. Well, no, you were looking at me like, what the fuck do you want, man? Why are you <laughs> staring at me? I'm looking at you like a fucking creeper. I, uh. I thought it was you, but I wasn't sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, yeah, that awkward two seconds right. where it's like, are we going to fight or do yeah. we know each other? <laughs> the sun was in my eyes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but no, it's good to be on um, with uh, with like no agenda, no plan whatsoever. Um, this is going to be a first for me. Do you normally? Do you normally have a plan? Well, normally what I do, and spoiler alert, um, I just take like little footnotes. So like when... When you see on the website, like my first episode, episode of first, you know, me and Andy, we just kind of discussed stuff that we wanted to talk about. So all we did was just pick a topic and just rolled with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what did you talk about? Uh, so on the episode of first, we talked about uh, like the first time we got online, you know, the first uh, first time we started chatting like with AOL and uh forum boards and like back when back when the internet was like still dial up and shit <laughs> oh dear yeah bung, bung, oh bung, my bung. god yeah um yeah we're old oh yeah which is it's good though um it's really weird to think too uh we're are we ju we're just gonna go free form here we're too free. I'm <laughs> just go <laughs> just gonna let fly my free water. chris let it let like, it go just let it go <laughs> i'm gonna be talking to you tell like, me about your mother <laughs> <You're> like, you're <laughs> She's a wonderful woman. Yeah, well, that's good. That's <laughs> she really raised good. seven kids, man. And oh, I didn't quite, know that. Quite seven? well. Yeah. Seriously? Um, yeah, seven kids in my family, ranging from... <laughs> this is where I'm like, how old are my siblings? Oh, boy. Uh, my oldest brother is, what, 40? And my youngest sister just turned 21 this year. So it's a pretty wide range of people. Um, or ages, I should say. But yeah, yeah. My mom's yeah. always like, I don't remember the 80s. <laughs> Because I a was party raising, animal. No, she's raising kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Um, look at me clipping out there. That's my fault. I went to go turn your volume up a little You're bit. You're going to have to be like, 
We'll, we'll fix it in post. Yeah, exactly. That's um, right. Where was I going with this freeform thing? Oh, the internet and technology oh, and, yeah. um, and dial up when you had to wait like five minutes to see a single image. <laughs> You remember that shit? I just, I just like, like what's implied. You come up in lines, <laughs> and then it would be like pixelated, and then it would like you would get the top of the image, and then it would pause, and then you would it's finished a load. Well, I, it, it's cool that we were at a pretty unique time as far as the range of technology we've seen. Because if you look at now, say you were born, I don't know, um, in two thousand eight. Technology has changed so fast over the last 11 years or so oh, yeah. that you don't even get a chance. Like if you're growing up with that, it's just super quick. Whereas oh, yeah. I felt like we had a chance. You were a child of the 80s, were you not? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not going to make you say your age out loud on here. Even though it's, <laughs> it's all good. I'm almost 40, man. Yeah. it's No shame. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be 36 here in a couple weeks. Um, oh, my God. I'm older than you. You are. Pains, pains wow. you. Oh <laughs> God, man! Why did we start off this way? <laughs> <laughs> Just on a down note, you're like, I'm sad. I now. know, right? Calm down with that shit, son. <laughs> <laughs> but what we have seen over the course of our lifetime, I feel like it moved a little bit slower. And maybe, maybe I'm just looking at this through the filter of my memory here, because for the time, I suppose it probably was still changing rapidly. I mean, I guess when I'm well, thinking technology, I'm mostly thinking audio, you know, as far as you went from records to cassette tape to CD and finally to digital format. Um, but I think nowadays that happens so fast. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not a kid now. Maybe that's what I'm getting at here. So I'm Maybe. glad I'm not a child in today's day and age. And I'm glad I grew up in an era where all the stupid stuff I did <laughs> wasn't documented. <laughs> right. right, exactly. Oh my God. Um, I, the poor kids these days, man. Um, and it creeps me out just a little bit, too, to think about that, where I'll tell you a story. Yes. Since it's all about, I mean, it's not a long story, and it's yeah. not like a super in-depth story either. But I'll take whatever you got. Um, so this concerns basically like kids on social media and people putting their kids on social media. So I played mm. well, and you know, a lot of times like, so my family, we have our group, a little family group, closed group. So I can see my nieces and nephews. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Um, cause most of them are pretty far away and I don't get to see them in person. So it's nice to see pictures, but it's a little bit scary to think about your kids or your nieces or nephews or whatever are just out there right. on the internet. And this is why it's scary to me. So I did a presentation on guitar at a childcare center. Okay. Which was fun, you know, a bunch of tiny little. What is what is child care center? So just and it was a daycare place I went to. And okay. Off the top of my head, I for the life of me can't remember the name of what it was. So hold on, hold on. I, I need to understand this before you continue. So it's a chi it's a daycare center. So I had a parent of one of my students. Her sister worked at um, a child care center. Okay. And they were like, "Hey, it would be really cool if you came in and." talk to these kids about guitar and played a little bit for them. It's like, oh, yeah, that would be neat. How um, old are these kids? Uh, anywhere between four and six. You know, so they basically love anything you do. On were the they instrument. understanding it, though? I mean, Yeah, they? yeah. I mean, so I, can, and okay. I, was, I didn't go in there, and I was like, okay. So, you know, as you may know, the guitar is a direct descendant of the vihuela. <laughs> and there were, <laughs> you know, like, and if you don't know about the composer Mudara, then we have to go back in time to 1536. Oh, man, these kids are walking <laughs> out like Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't go that in depth. But it'd be like, okay, you know, here's a guitar. It's just like you. It's got a body and a neck and a head, and these are the strings. Okay. And so I would talk about the parts, and then I would play a little bit. And I played classical guitar, which even that, playing for kids, classical guitar is nerve-wracking. It's, it's so satisfying, and it's a wonderful instrument. Playing it in front of people, for me at least, and I, I think a lot of other classical guitar players feel this way too, but it gets to be nerve wracking. Um, Why do you say it like that, nerve wracking? Um, because it's an intense instrument. I'm going to, we'll come back to that. Okay. I don't want, because <laughs> otherwise I'll lose my, lose my train of thought. <laughs> no, no, keep and going. Somebody's going to listen to this podcast and be like, these sound like two guys who are just like freshly high. <laughs> um, well, we're not. We're yeah. not, okay? We're just, we're drinking yeah. a, a beer that will remain unnamed because we don't want to 
pay for anything here. I suppose, yeah. Um, that we'll you know, just say it this way: he was a a, a patriot. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, bitch. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I go to this child care center and it was unbelievable how many children there that I had never met in my life that I knew by first and last name solely because of social media. Like really like friends, kids that, that, you know, and, and I shouldn't even say friends. I should say mostly acquaintances, like their stuff will pop up on your feed. Yeah. Friend of a friend kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like. Oh yeah, you're so and so, which is creepy to me. <laughs> yeah, that super is super creepy, man. I can like, definitely say, especially when you're in a like a, a presentive state. Yeah, and you've got a bunch of them all in front of you. That's that kind of. It was really weird to yeah. be like, like oh, I know man. some of these kids. So I work with, um, I teach kids obviously, teach adults too. That's how we know each other. For you people out there, um, yeah, you teach you teach just guitar. I do. Okay, so. Privately, yes, I just teach guitar now at the university. Um, I teach at VCSU in Valley City and then um, NDSU as well. I teach group guitar up there. And at Valley City, I ended up teaching some ukulele this semester because I taught a, a methods class, which was really cool too. So for those of you that aren't aware, a methods class would be basically teaching you how to play a little bit of an instrument. You know, you're not going to be pro by the time you're done, but you're gonna have a basic understanding of an instrument. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. He's a patriot. Uh, maybe <laughs> Drink the, my beer. Maybe the beer was a bad idea. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we should have just stuck with water. <laughs> that's yeah, or coffee cups or something. I mean, yeah. Um, again, I'm older now. I gotta drink decaf at this time of night. <laughs> Ouch, <laughs> I'm not even that old. Right. <laughs> Give me jittery and keep me up all night. Um, but no, you take a methods course and they will get you to the point where you can play you can take wind methods so you learn how to play saxophone and clarinet and flute oh so it's like a general overview yes enough so you can be a band teacher you know i mean okay. if you think about it and you're a band teacher for an elementary or high school band or something and generally i mean you're going to be doing most of the teaching i think earlier on fifth and sixth grade but hold um, on are you talking about you taking this course or i taught your the student? course you're teaching uh, okay so you're teaching music to potential music teachers. Right, so you have music majors, music ed majors more specifically, that have to take a certain amount of methods classes, like brass methods, wind methods. Um, my case would have been guitar methods. Sometimes they just called it string methods if we wanted to tie it in with like violin, uh, violin and cello, which I do not teach, then it would have been a split class. But this semester I ended up teaching guitar and then they wanted bass and ukulele. Um, okay. I don't play the ukulele. Are you kidding me? I swear to God, I've been I've been sitting on that question for the last like five minutes. Like, why ukulele and not guitar? And now all of a sudden, I hear I don't know. I so play ukulele. I, I I did teach guitar, and I spent the majority of the semester on guitar. And there's a reason for that too, just because um, it's been pretty cool to see a lot of places are incorporating guitar into the classroom. And I'm going to touch back on that too, because guitar is kind of a weird bastard of an instrument. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's almost viewed that way as like the bastard child of the instruments just because it's not in the orchestra. It's not in the wind band. So, That's a good you know, point. Where, I never where thought does it about fit it like in that. now? Yeah. And so if you're in a classical music program, you aren't, um, like guitar generally isn't the main focus. Now, granted, there are plenty of universities out there with fantastic guitar programs. So I shouldn't, I'm not just throwing it out like nobody teaches guitar they do um but a lot of times it gets viewed a little bit differently and because i don't know if it's its association with popular music or what but anyway i'll come back to that in a minute after this ukulele story so i taught guitar for the most part mostly because a lot of your students are going to end up teaching private guitar lessons as well as, I shouldn't say students, but the students who will become teachers will be teaching private guitar lessons and maybe a group guitar class in their high school or elementary, which is really cool. That's becoming a popular deal now. Um, but I had to teach ukulele too because that is also gaining popularity now as well, which is a little bit strange to me. I mean, it's coming back now, ukulele, or it's, it's making a, what should I say, a resurgence, I guess. When I think of ukulele, well, who's the first person you think of when you think of ukulele? Uh, person, not so much a person, but location. 
Do you think, you think, I think of Hawaii? Hawaii. <laughs> um, I think of that. <laughs> Is that far too generalized? <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> you can think whatever you want, man. That's uh, that's like if I were over here doing a word association <laughs> test, and I'm like, I can't believe you thought that. You're a horrible human yeah, I, being. I, I'm a music racist. <laughs> I think of creepy ass Tiny Tim, man, singing tiptoe. Oh with tulips. yeah, oh that's and that, right. That has turned me off to the instrument, <laughs> so I associate this instrument with like super creepy dudes. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and here you are with one of your hands. <laughs> yeah, right. You're not um, helping yourself here, Chris. No. So, um, but I mean, nowadays, like, it's a pretty popular instrument, and it makes a lot of sense, I guess, to know how to play it if you're going to be a music teacher because. It's it's really good for little kids. You know, they're tiny. Their tiny oh, little suppose. hands can actually play yeah. it, and it's fairly easy. Now, that being said, I had to teach this instrument um, that I didn't know how to play. And so <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I learned it about three days <laughs> before I had to teach no it. No way, really? Um, ukulele, it's not that bad. So for anyone out there looking to learn ukulele, it's pretty easy. <laughs> actually, really? I was, if you have any guitar knowledge, I was like, oh, it's the guitar starting at the fifth fret. And that's it. And that's it. So once that registered in my head, I was like, I play ukulele yeah, now. Yeah, but given the size difference, <laughs> though, that part's weird. I was going to say because you, like, especially as long as you've been playing, there's got to be a lot of muscle memory involved there. You know, again, but if you think about like, because you know, you play guitar. I hope of. you. I hope you still put, pick it up. It's sitting well, right behind you. Yeah, Make you play. Be like, play girls. for me. When the girls <laughs> come into the studio, <laughs> you know, like, you oh my god, it. do you play guitar? Yeah, I have my own albums. They're just not published yet. I don't like to, you know, brag about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I swear to God, this turned into a college guitar. Boo. <laughs> right, exactly. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but disappointment in the studio right now. Um. It's not bad. Like it, it's just like playing higher up on the neck. So the muscle okay. memory stuff isn't really too bad. The holding it was a little bit strange at first, and um, some people use this weird felt pick. Uh, I, felt? I, felt? Yeah. It's uh like legit felt. Yep. Like not some weird musical term. No, nope, no, nope, like, like actual felt. Um, Why does uh, it not get torn to shreds? I'm I'm assuming they do after. Well, the strings are nylon. You know, keep that in mind. Oh, okay. Um. I'm trying to think if they're all, if any of them are wound, but I think all of them are. No, the, there's got to be at least one wound string. But they're yeah, they're weird nylon. Huh. Um, I shouldn't say weird either. Classical guitar is nylon strings too, but um, a lot of it is picking with your your fingers then too. And there's a lot of cool techniques you can do. And obviously, I didn't pick up a ton of techniques in three days. <laughs> Right. Um, enough to get through the class, though. And then I had my class. There were six, six of them, seven of them. I'm going to say seven. Um, I made them all play Ode to Joy on a student recital. And they did it. <laughs> I was, really? That's pretty cool. How long did it take? Um, we actually only did three 50-minute lectures. Wow. 50 minutes? Yeah. And they were doing Ode to Joy. No, hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, they, I mean, this is one of the nice things too, though. If you, if you read music um, and you have a general understanding of how an instrument works, you can usually pick it up and play it. So a lot of times okay. when you see people that are like, whoa, they're amazing. They play all these instruments. Well, it's because they know how music works and how to read music oh, and okay. then maybe have a general understanding of how each instrument works. Now, I couldn't go and pick up a saxophone and play without sounding like absolute trash right now. Um, well, I'm sure some relate to another. I mean, if you were a trumpet player, then saxophone might be a little uh, bit easier. I think it, I still think it would be hard just because of you know, trumpet. You're, Oh yeah, that's a good point. You're pinching okay. your, you know, maybe you, you're buzzing with your lips as opposed to your lips make the noise as opposed right. to a reed. Um, so I, now I'm thinking like clarinet and saxophone. clarinet and saxophone. Then yeah, yes, I would okay. say you could, Okay. Super similar, um, or you know, say maybe trumpet and euphonium or something like another valved. The hell is a euphonium? Chris? Think of think of like, like tuba, man. Is it a tuba? But it's not like a tuba. A, not but a tuba, but it's called it's a what? Euphonium. The slightly euphonium. It's it's smaller cousin. Okay. Um, 
But like, oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, not the big old sousaphone right, that right, wraps but, around you. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Um, okay. So, I mean, you've got similar stuff there where you could do it, but, um, geez, we just, just all over the place, man. Just ramble on. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> that's, seriously, I just said this in the garage. Yep. <laughs> like, there will be no direction to this podcast whatsoever. No, but we're going to um, blink an eye, and it'll be an hour and a half later. <laughs> that's true. How long do you usually go? About an hour podcast? And a half. Okay. Yeah. Just, I try to, because uh, I try to keep the file size a certain mm. Uh, a certain amount and typically that lands I mean if we go over 15 minutes or under 15 minutes it's no big deal I mean one of them I went for it was like two hours and 10 minutes I think and it was fine totally fine so it's not gonna be like I've been watching a lot of I do like the podcast thing man um and I can't say that like I you know I've, I've I do watch some Joe Rogan obviously from time to time but I've been watching uh Burt Kreischer? No, Jocko Wilnink. I haven't even heard of that He's one. He's a what? Navy SEAL, former Navy SEAL. He's What's he talking about, about? Discipline. <laughs> oh, man, Chris. He has a lot of I different... <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> do not I look from like, you. Do I look like a joke to you? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, man. I well, know my I'm... voice makes me sound dumb. After mentioning that <laughs> podcast, man, I, now I'm scared to answer. Um, I, would, I would check it out because... Uh, no, and I'm not talking about like... Well, it's just discipline in all areas of your life, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, listen to a lot of him. Uh, is it is he solo or does no, he? No, it's, so it's it's him and he's got his buddy Echo Charles on there, and then they bring guests in. And sometimes they talk about books. Um, other times they, um, like I watched one the other day where he had a guy who was one of the first um, Navy SEALs, Vietnam okay. era. Um, and that was fascinating stuff, man. But it's, it's really cool. I need things like that in my life as far as someone being like, you need to stay on track, and this is how you stay on track. Because um, I'm mostly self-employed. Noted. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do teach at the university, but you also do private lessons. Right, I do private lessons, and then I, I gig with various groups. Um, so, and, you know, for one of those, I'm responsible for all the booking as well, which is, you know, that's another world in itself. And then all the online stuff, any marketing I want to do, website upkeep, stuff like that. So to anyone who's self-employed out there ever worked for themselves, man, that's, you're kind of, you got to be on the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do find like, if you are pretty disciplined about stuff, it makes it a little bit easier because it's easy to get overwhelmed and just be like, okay, so today, you know, I've got to do A, B, C, and D, and then whatever else that needs to be done certain stuff pertaining to like okay well maybe i've got to answer all these emails i've got to send out some contracts i've got to make some more calls about booking then i've got a couple lessons from this time to this time i've got a break here where i should you know i got to practice too you got to get practice and you got to keep your chops up yeah that's actually part probably my favorite part of the day is the practice part i remember you telling me yeah there's a couple parts of your practice that you just love to zone out on oh yeah man um there, I mean, there are times, and I think this goes for anything and anybody doing any sort of, well, any job or any activity in your life, too, where you're going to be like, God, I just, I just don't feel like doing it today, you know? But <laughs> right. with the practice part of it, I found that's something you got to do it every day. I remember um, a, a fantastic guitar teacher, and he's pretty well known around the area, and he's got a really good guitar channel, too. His name is Steve Stein. Look him up. Um, I think I showed his videos to you when you were taking lessons, but he would yeah. always say, <laughs> you only have to practice on the days that you eat. So, <laughs> you know. It's wise. <laughs> it, it is. And so, I mean, you got to practice every day. But so all of that stuff added up, you know, you get to a point where it's like, okay, how am I going to fit all this in? And if you're all over the place with it, it's going to be hard and chaotic and you're going to, you'll burn out. Um, so let's start at the beginning. How did you get, because you started teaching guitar, right? Um, like private lessons. Yes. Well, so we'll go even farther back than that. So I started playing guitar. Um, tell me about your maja. <laughs> no, right, right. <laughs> we need to get a couch in here. <laughs> like, right. like one of those, you know, scented candles. <laughs> yep. Just I'm really, next thing you know, I'm just snoring. You're like, dude, you weren't supposed to fall asleep. I'm tired. I'm overworked. <laughs> you just wake up in the middle of the night. I'm cracking the door open. Homie, you want a blanket? <laughs> right, right. Don't I want to go home? What time is it? <laughs> 
It's like 2 a.m. You're fine. <laughs> like, oh, okay. My eyes are so dry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, that's – I'm going to go off on that too. Like LASIK, man, I got to get that one of these days. I'm tired of taking my contacts out at night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that I feel like that's that's fun. a myth. Waking up and being able to see clearly. Oh, dude, um, I've had a couple friends that fall asleep with that in, and it's like, oh, well, it sucks, them. man. Your eyes are all dry. <laughs> but uh, no, so I started playing guitar way back in the day. I was probably like fourteen years old. Um, learned off of Metallica tabs. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that's a it's a good place to start. It's a great place to start, <laughs> man. So I had some good metal chops uh, when I first started playing, and I wish that I had kept that up. And I've been trying to bring that back. Um, mostly because I've been just really inspired lately. I saw Mastodon two weeks ago. Um, oh, nice. Where? Uh, the Armory in Minneapolis. Oh, okay. Um, and I was they like, were with, here? <laughs> they were with Coheed and Cambria. Um, nice. And, yeah, great show, man. Was so it? anytime you see a good concert like that, I'm always like, I got to go home and practice. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, yeah. So what was like, that riff? Right, that's just it, man. Um, so... Started out playing a lot of metal, and I uh, was really big on, like I said, I was a huge Metallica fan. I still am, huge Pantera fan, um, even though they're, they're more grungy, big Alice in Chains fan. Oh, yeah. So I learned a lot of that, um, which was a ton of fun. But then one day I heard a friend of mine, um, well, I shouldn't say a friend of mine. It was more of a my brother's like college buddy. Um, showed me an album. It was Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds live at Luther College. And I don't know okay. if you've ever heard that album. No. You should listen to that album, man. Because <laughs> no. there is some phenomenal guitar playing on there. Tim Reynolds is a monster. Just a monster playing player. Um, and this is one of those situations where it's... Uh, because I hate to be that guy that's like, it totally changed my life, man. <laughs> but it, that totally changed the way I looked at guitar after I heard this dude just shredding on an acoustic and he was using um, delay effects and looping stuff. And I was like, man, that's volume pedal swell. So he would make his guitar sound like it would have like violin-esque characteristics. Um, that changed how I played. I just totally got into acoustic playing okay. after that. And, you know got into an acoustic duo i was in a group called um well, we were called head shop years ago this is back in like oh one oh two um and played a little bit around town here how many people two just two just two just the duo okay. um wrote a, guitar yep. guitar two guitars one vocalist wrote a lot of a lot of original stuff played a lot of dave matthews covers all right, all right. <laughs> um, hey that's all right that's a big hit in these parts yeah it was it was fun stuff um and then that band changed into um what did we call ourselves after that soul patch adams <laughs> soul patch adams <laughs> yep. i love it soul yeah. patch adams nothing changed great. it was exactly the same people <laughs> but we just changed the you guys name. were just like oh that would be a great yeah, name. <laughs> pretty much and that band broke up for you know the reasons that bands normally break up just mm-hmm. two guys being idiots um and then i ended up playing in another acoustic group cedo and topher and did that for like 10 years 10 years at least 10 years what was the band name Cedo and Topher Cedo and that was a duo too and then we eventually added in a rhythm section and all that um but so we were mostly doing acoustic stuff I was playing acoustic for all of that just leads and everything um trying to think of where I'm going with this story oh how did I get into guitar and teaching guitar yep but well I should mention too though so I actually did the first how old was I when I went back to school? It's like 26, I think. <laughs> this is so. when, yeah, when I went back to college. Because <laughs> um, I did go to college fresh out of high school when I was 18, and I went to UND for music. Okay. Um, I was there for one half of a semester. One half of a one semester, of and a you semester. were done. Yeah, I majored in partying. Yeah, um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> major in partying, minor in Not possession. Nice, but... <laughs> 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 and so I ended up dropping out and taking some time off, some me time, a good solid, mm-hmm. you know, at least eight years of me time. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but so this whole time I had never really had a guitar lesson. Um, and then I decided, well, maybe I should take some lessons. So I went over to Marguerite's and I studied with a guy over there and, um, you know, learned some stuff that 
I hadn't thought about before. He was more of a jazzer, and I really wasn't into jazz at that point in time. I am now, but so now he was teaching you like so methods, different like. cording and 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 stuff like that. But um, I, I don't want to say the lessons really weren't super intense. So when I went back to college, though, that's when I feel like I had my first real, like real guitar lessons, and that was with. Um, a guy who taught a ton of people around here, Mike Coates. Um, and he kicked my ass up and down. I talk about that all the time. Like that guy. And and I needed it. It was good for me. Um, so he was like the drill sergeant of guitar. Yeah, but meaner. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but again, I shouldn't say like mean, but just didn't take any crap, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, expected you to work and pushed you hard. And he wasn't, he's not the teacher for everybody, you know. He's the teacher for someone who's going to be really serious because mm-hmm. um, I feel like if you're going in there just to mess around, you're not going to make it. How did you do? I did well, I thought. I, I, a part of it, though, was, uh, and again, I'm not trying to I won't break my arm patting myself on the back <laughs> too hard here, um, but I wasn't like fresh 18-year-old, fresh out of high school, taking lessons, you know? Right. I was 26 years old. I had already been gigging in the bars started gigging in the bars when I was 19. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'd already and been now out. you got your party animal stuff behind you. you got it right. And I, and I had got m- most of that. Out of my <laughs> <system>. <laughs> I'm trying to paint this innocent picture. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I got most of that out of my system. And, you know, so I was there to work. Uh, and that was the nice thing about going back to college at a later age too, was, you know, I granted, I made some very good friends when I was there. Um, but that wasn't, it wasn't like, Again, if you're fresh 18, you know, and you're living in the dorms, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in college. It's a whole new world. I'm like, I've been out paying bills, working <laughs> 40 hour or more work week and gigging right. in the evenings already. Like, <laughs> I'm here to do this so I can, you know, maybe get a better, um, some more opportunities in life. So do you have a story that stands out with Mike? Oh, jeez. You're like, oh, I, have a I will bunch of never stories. forget that moment. Well, I mean, I can think of a ton of times where, like, first of all, I mean, he does come off as this gruff individual, but he's there to make you a better player. That's the thing you got to keep in mind is he's, he's, not <laughs> he's not an asshole just for the sake of being an asshole. He'll be harsh with you, but it has a purpose, and that is, the instrument is incredibly demanding to be anything more than a mediocre player. Now, um, there are a lot of, finger quotes, guitar players out there that you play three chords. Like, well, you play three chords, you don't really play guitar because you don't understand oh, the yeah, instrument. Oh, yeah, dude, that's, yeah. you just described like <laughs> half of the college <laughs> douchebags. I wrote this song, it's called Water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. So now do you really play the instrument or do you play three chords? And when you take classical guitar, for example, you can't do that, man. You have to, you got to work and you got to be disciplined because, and especially if you were someone like myself, um, when you see that, top-notch high tier guitar player classical guitar player they were like six or seven when they started a lot of them wow you know so it, t- it takes a long time and i remember mike saying this in lessons too being like it's going to be about 10 years before you feel good about this you know yeah that's no pressure <laughs> right um and it's true because i'm coming up on that 10 year mark and I feel pretty good about my plan right now. <laughs> nice. Finally, I mean, there's certain things I play on the guitar now. I'm like, man, he was right. There are just certain techniques that it took this long. Now, that's not saying you can't do it sooner. It's all about how much time you put in. And obviously, your physical makeup makes a difference, too, if you have really large hands or, you know, some people's hands just are better for guitar than others. Right. Um, but, yeah, it. I mean, very demanding, but not without reason. Um no, I'd come into lessons and he'd, you know, I'd play something badly and he'd be like, Chris, play that again and not so shitty this time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but again, like I said, I needed that. Um, and the fun thing about that, though, is so I studied with Mike throughout my undergrad and then through graduate school, too. I did my master's up there. Um, and it was fun to see. I, sh- I shouldn't say fun. I mean, it was fun, but it's interesting to see, too. Um, and even after I graduated, how your relationship with your teacher and mentors start to change. Did he start to light up on you? And I, I wouldn't say he 
he didn't lighten up, but it wasn't in the sense of, I mean, he lightened up in the sense of where he, he's like, I know you know stuff now. Okay. You're no longer maggots. You're now turds. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's so that was pretty cool to, you know, to, but you know, when you're studying with someone, I studied him with him for a total of five years, I think. Um, the re, you know, the relationship you have with a instructor student like that, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting one. And I can say the same for like teaching myself, um, not teaching myself, but myself as a teacher, <laughs> <laughs> right. the relationship you have with your students is very interesting because you are, um, your instructor. Um, but at the same time, sometimes you fill that role of like, you're a mentor on the instrument. Um, there are times, and generally I find this with younger students, um, not like little kids, but teenage students where you're counselor as well. Um, and I'm not saying so that's a bad thing. So we talking like personal issues? Yeah, sometimes and... people will come in and, and they'll talk to you about things that they wouldn't talk to. Well, I totally understand that. I mean, we're affected by music. I mean, music can draw out some emotion. Well, I get, well, that and just the fact that you're building this very, this personal one-on-one relationship as far as, again, it's True. the student and the master, you know, right, kind right. of deal. Um your playing's not so great this week. What's bothering you, my son? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of play that again and not right. so shitty this time. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't have any people in my studio <laughs> if I did that. But again, like I thrive under those conditions. That's what I need from a teacher is someone to really push me like that. And it did help that I was older because I know other people out there that <laughs> had like really bad experiences under that kind of instruction and it, and it ruined the instrument for them. But I know a lot of other people that... Um, they're the same as me where it's like, no, I needed someone to be like, gee, you don't, yeah, we you do don't know half as much as you think you know. Right. Um, and again, going into something like classical guitar, it's a very intense instrument. And so it, you, you can't, you got to use your whole ass. You can't just half ass it. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Um, I mean, you can, but you're going to peak out pretty quick there's a certain level you'll get to and you won't go beyond that. Um, and did Mike break that barrier? For oh you yeah. There? Yeah. He would, I mean, every semester was a little bit, a little bit higher up, um, get a little bit better. I, one thing I do miss like graduate school was an incredibly intense time cause I was gigging on the regular. Um, and I was in ensembles at school. I was taking, um, and just for reference here, most people, if you've never been to graduate school, six credits is full time in graduate school, as opposed to say 12 credits okay. in your undergrad. Um, and they don't recommend you do too much more than that. And I remember taking 12 credits one semester. Ooh. So I was busy, you know, super busy. <laughs> and then I was practicing anywhere from, you know, about six hours a day on classical guitar. Oof. And then maybe having rehearsals. Six hours a day? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, though, like when you put it into perspective that when oh, you're in graduate was, school, that's your job. It's your job. Yeah. That's your job. Okay. So, you know, if you were to say, like, you, you went to work for six hours today, people yeah, would right. be like, yeah, yeah. it's part time, bro. <laughs> well, it's the same thing with anything. Like uh, one of the best examples I like to give is like Manny Pacquiao, for example. You know, he it's shocking to hear that this man eats 10,000 calories a day. Yeah. But he's in the gym training for eight hours a day. You know, you got to burn those calories. Right, right. Um, so it makes sense for you to turn around and say, yeah, I was practicing for six hours a day. And, you know, th I mean, there's still days where I get up there to that point. Um, I think we all know how that goes as we get older, too. Time is a hot commodity, man. Oh, yeah. Um, and that comes back to that discipline thing, too, though, where nowadays I don't. I mean, some days I do have that six hours to sit down and practice. Um not often anymore. So now it has to be like super focused and efficient. That's where I'm at now is how do I find the most efficient way to practice and work on the things that I need to work on that are going to give me the most benefit with the least amount of time. Um, again, cause I'm not in grad school anymore. And <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, but just lost my train of thought it went away um, <laughs> well i think we're about to transition from your grad school to you either teaching or gigging oh yeah thank you um we can go either way so as far as the teaching goes i started that in about 08 and i was a shitty teacher <laughs> <laughs> wow in the beginning very hard. i think well i think a lot of people um when you look back at 
what you were teaching right away and how you teach now. I mean, I can only speak for myself, obviously. Um, but I've talked to other teachers about this too, where I, I don't think I was a very good teacher, but I think you have to go through that too. You know, you got to learn. Yeah. Um, it's like anything else. You've got to practice it to get better at it. Um, That's so when true. I, I first started teaching, I used to, you know, I started out with maybe three students or something and I would drive to their house and teach. Wow, um, that's dedication. Yeah, was, <laughs> I think foolish. So half foolish. of your income was going to gas. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and when I think about that now, too, because I don't do that anymore, and, and for a, a variety of different reasons, most of them is like I got my studio, my home studio set up at home. Right. And, and, and you just eat up lesson slots if you're like, oh, well, your lesson's at 4 o'clock. Well, I got to leave here at 345 to get there and we're teach till. 4 30 and then I got to come home and it's going to be 4 yeah. 45 well I can't teach from 4 30 to 5 then um so I kind of got rid of that but yeah I was a not a great teacher um I learned a lot about teaching um obviously from taking lessons with Mike and I think about that now where I'm like okay well what would Mike do in this situation okay that's what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna scale it back about 60 <laughs> percent <laughs> that's not good enough Chris get your shit together right. they're like you know <laughs> okay. okay, try that again. <laughs> um, and I learned a lot from Steve Stein because I, I sat in for about a year or two semesters, which is, I guess, one school year, maybe three semesters. I don't know. It was a while I sat in on his um, group guitar class at NDSU. He used to teach that. Okay. Um, and I learned a ton about teaching guitar from just watching him teach and how he approached different subjects. And he's got a... Um, fantastic way of explaining things in a very simple manner um and was it a trip to go from a teacher like mike to a tran transitioning oh, it's, to a it's teacher totally, like totally i would say different teaching style now you got to keep in mind though steve stein studied with mike coates as well <laughs> okay <laughs> way back good in, cop bad cop <laughs> well back in the um uh at msum which is where Mike used to teach, and he taught a ton of ton of guitar players around town here. Um, but yeah, it is a totally different style. But again, you're talking about I think of, you know, classical guitar versus we'll just call it commercial guitar for now. Okay, I think that makes sense. You're kind of strumming or rock guitar, anything like that. Sure. Um, modern guitar, I guess. Um, that's two different worlds. I view them almost as two different instruments, just because some of the technique is so much different. Um, and the playing style is so much different too. It's not to say that if you play one, you can't play the other, but they're different just because you can, you know, strum a few chords or even if you're like a hardcore shredder playing metal and stuff, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to sit down and play classical and you might be the world's best classical guitar player. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to sit down and be able right. to, to play some shred metal. Yeah. Um, so I, it is. It, it is a little bit different, but it was cool, you know, to see, like, to get those two different perspectives on teaching really helped me out a lot. And that's when I felt like I got to be a much better teacher. I still have days now. I've been, what, like I said, I've been teaching since 08. Um, I have days where I feel really good as a teacher. I'm like, man, I, re I really nailed that, got that point across. You could see it in the student's face that they got it and they left here knowing something. And then you have other days <laughs> where you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> How Why? do I, how do I, what am I supposed to do with this student? You know, like they're just not getting it. Yeah. Is it me? Am I screwing this up here? Why am I taking his money? <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and that's the thing too, is cause I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say like, I, I'm in it sh just solely for the passion of teaching. I love teaching. Um, it is very rewarding. Um, would I do it for free all the time? No. <laughs> well, of course not. You need to be paid um, for your time. It's it's um it's incredibly intense too, man. I I think about that where, well, so when you were taking lessons, um, and I, I feel a little bad about this. So, well, because you had <laughs> speak on it, son. Yep. yep you the would, best part about this is honesty. <laughs> right. That's what gets well, the most views. <laughs> you would have been. You were always my last lesson of the night. Mm-hmm. And late. You know, like when yeah, did you take lessons? Eight thirty like, or something. Yeah, something like that. So, um, 
And just for the record now, the latest I teach is 7.15 now. <laughs> Ooh, I cut you back far. <laughs> yeah, like, you damn, this dumbass is just keeping me up forever. Well, I thought about that. And it's not even so much like, oh, he's keeping me up. I become a worse teacher as the night wears oh, on. exhaustion. Like you know, you're getting tired. In. Yep. Um, and anybody who does any sort of instructing or teaching, um, I guess this is the same thing with like I, you know, my dad was in aviation for many, many years and he talked about this with flight instructors. It's the same thing. You go for three hours of intense one-on-one teaching or like flight instruction or something or four hours. That's rough, man. I suppose back to back like that too. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is there are some days of the week where you do that and, and it's pretty intense and I'm not saying it's, it can't be done or you're going to be a horrible teacher if you do it because you can do it, but any teacher out there, I think, would agree that it, it gets a little bit. You might not be as much on your A game as you want to be if you push yourself too far with that. If you try to do, if you were to try to say, like, do six hours of lessons straight, right? You're going to fry out. Oh, yeah. Um, and it depends who your students are, too, though. You know, I think if you were teaching six one hour lessons and they were very. Um, involved students, even actually, even then I think about that. I'm tired just talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine all the back and forth because every student's not going to be the same. Right, right. So you have to, and again, that's something too that I like to do with my lessons is I customize, I don't have like a template for every student. Like I'm going to shove you into this mold and this is how you're going to play when I'm done. I try to. Right customized to their strengths and and weaknesses um and then stylistically too like what they want to play if if you're not into a certain style of music i'm not going to sit down and be like you got to learn how to play jazz yeah, you know it's a if, lot of customization it is and but i mean there are good things about that too because i feel like it makes me a better player um true having to be able i my music history professor i always used to say this I refer to him a lot in my lessons, too, because he was a pretty big influence in my life. Um, old Dr. Groves. Dr. <laughs> Groves. Dr. Groves. He's, he's still at NDSU, too. He's been there for is he the longest faculty member at this point. He's been there Serious? a Yeah, he's a long, long time. But he uh, would always tell wow. us. He'd say a lot of weird things in class. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an example. I want a quote. Um, Give me a quote. Shouldn't it be potatoes ole instead of potato olays? Okay, this guy's got a lot of time to think on his hands. <laughs> he's, he's one of those guys, too, that, like, I'm pretty sure he's a I – mean, he knows so much. Like, he would sit down to lecture, wouldn't open a book or anything. He w- It was a class where you walked in, and he wasn't doing PowerPoint stuff. He would sit at the desk and talk. Oh, he's been and, there so long. Yeah, it's a, it's and, muscle memory he, he now. Knows, he knows his stuff, man. But um, he would always say that if you don't – if you can't explain something in your own words, you don't truly own that knowledge, Ooh, which makes a lot a of good, sense. Yeah, because um, I think about that when I'm teaching. I'm like, if I can't really explain this concept in my own words, do I really know what I'm talking about? Then true. Um, and so there are things I might come across. I'm like, man, I don't know this as well as I thought. So I should probably brush up a little bit on you know how to how to either teach this or approach this subject. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the teaching side. Where am I at right now? Like summertime slows down. I got like 17 students. There was a point in time where I was like, I'm going to teach 30 students a week. Oh my God. Uh, That's right. That is the appropriate reaction. I got up to 25 and realized I'm like, I can't take anymore. Wow. And how many a day? Um, so that depends. Like, so during the school year, there would be some days, so I would go out this past semester, for example, I would go to Valley City two days a week. So I would, on Mondays, I would go out there, I would teach a guitar methods course, eight individual lessons, come back to Fargo and teach another um, four individual lessons. Wow. And then... Yeah, it made for a long day. And then Tuesdays, I would also, um, that would be spread out. So I would have a couple lessons, like maybe three lessons during the daytime. And then when the evening would roll around, I'd teach straight through from about four o'clock until seven. Um, Wednesdays, I'd go back to Valley City, teach class again, and then come back and teach lessons from, 
about 3.30 to 7.30. Wow. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you're trying to Damn. get practice time in here too and then do anything else business related again you know booking gigs or um answering emails is a lot of what i do do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bet um but yeah i mean it, it gets pretty busy so the idea of doing 30 in a week um part of it's for my own <laughs> my own sanity <laughs> to not do that many but again like i said you become a less effective teacher i think if you're burnt out no, you know, and so that. you're really not doing yourself any favors and you're not doing your students any favors to say, oh, well, hey, yeah, I'm just cram as many of you in here as I can. <laughs> um, right. I think the only way I could really handle that was if I was in a situation where more people were available during the daytime and they were going back to back and you could spread them out. But um, across the week, that is, because, mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, the majority of people work during the day. And most younger students are in school during the day, so your prime times you're going to be teaching from, again, depending on how late you want to go. Um, so now you were doing the teaching at the same time you were gigging? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when did you start back up with the band? Okay, so I, again, going back in history again, so I originally started playing gigs in... 2002 I believe okay in Fargo here in and o just the two of you just the two of us and that carried on I mean that band broke up and then I started playing with the Cedo and Topher show and we went until 20 15 okay 16 2016 I think um and then that band broke up for all the reasons that bands break up. Um, right, right. Part of it too, our drummer got married and moved. and um, So I took almost two years off from playing rock shows like that. And in that two year span from about 16 to 18 or, or so, um, I was only doing like classical and jazz gigs, which was fun. I learned a ton about jazz guitar in that time. I did take some jazz lessons in college, but I feel like I learned more about jazz actually playing it than I did in my lessons um and i was fortunate enough to play with uh well the dude i play with now in 12 strings eric martin's monster player um knows a lot about jazz and so just playing with that dude I'd be like oh i'm getting better <laughs> um, i suppose you weren't used to jazz before no it wasn't something i played a lot of and i think a big part of that too if you're going to get good at any style of music you have to listen to it right and so i didn't you know get into listening to jazz either until later on in my in graduate school and we got into that the 12 strings thing started because we had a um, ensemble credits to fill so we had a, a duo for our ensemble that was classical but we we're like we should play some jazz too um so you went from 25 students back down to how many and gigging at the same time well i mean so i've been at where am i now so um this entire time since well, since I graduated, which was back in 2015, I've been maintaining a studio of anywhere between 17 and 25. And that's just because summertime drops off. You get a lot of students who, um, younger ones usually, take time off during the summer. Do you have any groupies? No. No. <laughs> no, that's a myth. We'll get... <laughs> that's a that's myth. That's a myth. You have to be like... You got to be like Motley Crue or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. I mean, would, wouldn't it blow your mind if you got to a point where you had a groupie, even though it was just one groupie? Like, you sit back and you're like, fuck, am I at that level now? I'm 35, dude. That just sounds like work to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, that's something, too, we think about, like, you know, because we, we gigged, um, Cedo and Topher, we gigged a lot. And there were a lot of weekends where it's like, you play, you know, you play Friday, Saturday night. Sometimes we'd have a Wednesday gig in there as well, or maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And a lot of it would be out of town. Um, and usually, you know, we weren't traveling thousands of miles by any means, but enough to where you're two, you know, hour, two hours out of town. So you get done with a gig at two in the morning. Do you have a good story on a gig that went wrong? Um, I mean, I have a lot of gigs where there's, I don't want to say things have gone wrong. 
Um, you kind of just have to roll with the punches on any gig. I mean, we had one gig where we played at a venue that I won't say its name. No, you don't have to. Um, but we were, this was a duo show and they had an employee of the place we were playing was drinking there that night too. Oh, cool shit. Cool guy, you know, cool guy. But right, really but if you're on the job, got, man, you can't well, be drinking. I mean, he wasn't on the job. He was just there after work. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay. Getting up and, like, got just stumbly, stumbly blackout drunk, I'm sure. And we're doing our thing, jamming out. And um, for a smaller acoustic show, all I'm using, you've got two speaker stands and then two powered 15-inch speakers. So, I mean, imagine something these. I like the G, the JBLs that I'm using now, and they they weigh about 37 pounds, maybe 40 pounds. Wow! I think um, some big ass magnets. And you're talking about what is, what is this like two feet? Four feet? Well, uh, three, three, four. So just like from my head, you'd... somewhere right, somewhere the, around there. Yeah, they're they're not super tall, but um, this dude comes up. I don't know if he was going to talk to one of us or say something, but he came walking up to the stage, and he tripped. <laughs> and he went to like catch himself and he grabbed onto like the speaker stand and it came down and it clipped Cito in the back of the head. Oh no. Yeah. Smashed his guitar stand that he had over there. Oh, One of the mic shit. stands got all bent up. Speaker came down. <laughs> was he bleeding? <laughs> he wasn't bleeding, but you could tell like I was like, oh, oh he just had wow, a big nasty man. welt on the back of his head. You know, that looked like it hurt. Mm. <laughs> you know, those fucking speakers ain't light. No, they aren't. And so, like, I mean, we've had stuff like that happen. I had another dude, um, again, another. This was a hole-in-the-wall bar. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually where it happens. <laughs> yeah. Dude come walking up to the stage once again to be like, ah, play, hold on loosely. Ah, <laughs> God. Trips again. So I had these really nice, they were Dean Markley foldable guitar stands, and I can't find them anymore, which misses me off. They were the best guitar stands I've ever had. They would fold up really tiny, and they were pretty durable unless a super drunk dude falls on them and <laughs> breaks them. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of stories like that where, again, drunk people have come and fallen on your stuff. I've had other gigs, again, out of town, will not say the name of the bar, where mm -hmm. you show up and, and the owner of the bar is already, the guy who's supposed to pay you, is already like blackout drunk. Oh shit! Like, oh goodness! And I mean, I played to some. I played to some fantastic crowds. How do you even it. handle that? How do you even handle like like you, you go in? The owner's already hammered, and you go in, you play, you have a good time, and then the owner is just belligerent, and you're like, "Fuck it, I'll call him tomorrow." I well, guess. I can't think of a lot of gigs where we've left without getting paid. Okay, you usually make it happen. Um, you obviously the best way. Has he ever given you attitude? Oh yeah, we always. You, you, I don't like, want to say always, fuck, but man, yeah, like yeah, it. we've had plenty of that. But for the, <sighs> I think the best way to handle any situation like that is to remain calm and composed. Oh yeah, you know that's yeah. dealing with drunks in general. Well, you, you of course. You just remain calm and composed. Be like, hey, you know. Especially if the owner is right, right, and, and <sighs> that's why you have contracts, though. Too. That's the other exactly. part. Is, is all you musicians out there. Um, contracts, <laughs> contracts, contracts, contracts. Even if it, even it's just a basic contract, it still counts. That's that's what you need. I mean, there was a point in time where we used to do a lot of stuff. This was way back in the day when we first started out, too, like a handshake, you know? And don't get me wrong. If a person is good to their word, a handshake is as good as a contract. But... But, but a handshake does not stand up in court. That's um, correct. You're like, do you? I have a video of the handshake happening. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, that's a, that actually will hold up in court nowadays. That's a legal document. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 He shook your hand, but I don't know why. He might have just been saying hi. All right. Um, right. <laughs> but um, no, contracts are good to have just because then there's no misunderstandings between the people. But I mean, there's been places right. we played where like the crowd just hates you. Oh, right when you sucks. walk in, they haven't even heard. Now, you when play you say one, no. "hate you," do you are you just talking that real awkward silence, or are you talking about "oh, you guys suck"? I, I have had like, I mean, the awkward silence. You know, I don't really know what's worse. To tell you the truth, is like playing and having people be like, "Oh, you guys suck," or nothing, like nothing. What are you doing? That do you just keep going on you strong? Just, you just keep playing, man. You just keep playing. Yeah. I mean. I, What's going through your head? Like, 
because obviously you've had a show where it was just dead quiet. What oh, goes through your head I've when you're walking out? I've had more than out? a show <laughs> <laughs> that's been dead quiet. Um, and again, that's the thing too. Like it's hit or miss. It depends where you are. It depends what's going on. Because I mean, there are times when I played a show and you'd be like, "You seriously gonna put us on during a Vikings game?" Really? You, you really, you really thought it would be a good idea to book oh us? Oh my god! During this Vikings game, wow! And you're like, yeah, everybody hates you the moment you walk in. They don't want to hear you play. They want to watch the game. That's right. Shut you know, up! It's then, fourth quarter. I played gigs where it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, like, hey, maybe you want to turn that TV on the stage behind us off. Are you serious? Please. The TV was I've, on. I've had gigs like that. Like, yeah, I'm unplugging this now, dude. Come on. Oh my um, god. Yeah. <laughs> I got a great idea. Right. Let's put a TV on the stage up there. Play some dramatic music. Speed is on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, for the most part, I, I'm i a lot more mellow now, obviously, than I was in my early 20s playing gigs. And I don't party as hard on stage either because that was something, too. Like, you're playing to a dead room, but you're you're getting drunk on stage, I guess. <laughs> you know, right. That's something I don't do anymore either. I will have a beer or two, but I, there was a point in time I remember playing a show Yes, that's the story I'll I'm looking tell for you where it was. right there. This was, um, this was a bar far up north um, that smells like the water treatment plant, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, <laughs> you probably have there. a good idea matter. maybe what I'm talking about. Kind of. But, um, <laughs> way up north. But we used to play there on the regular, and we uh, – I must have been about 24 at the time, and you would – they would serve you shots – but not in like a nice glass shot glass. It would come in a plastic cup. So That's imagine understandable. right now. So imagine doing big shots of Jose Cuervo. Oh, and, you mean in red solo cups? No, no. Like think of a um that you pull out of a dispenser. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Size plastic <laughs> cup. Yep, 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 yep. Um. Yeah, the, full it's like, to the top of tequila, though. Oh God! And for some reason, the drinking out of that plastic cup is so much worse. Easy, I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's easier, right? It, I don't, it just makes me want to blow. Makes me want to throw up a little bit mm-hmm. when I do that. But I remember like getting fed tequila shots all night long, and we get to the we take our break, the the third set right after the third set, and we're gonna go into the fourth set. And I'm like, okay, okay, you can do this. You can do this. And I'm, I'm basically numb at this point. Um, and I look over. <laughs> and we played Last Dance with Mary. This is where, this is what I remember. We're playing Last Dance with Mary Jane, Tom Petty. You mm-hmm. know, and I look over and cedo has got his mouth like he's leaning on the microphone. <laughs> he's to hold him done. up. He's Just toast. Done. And he sang, <laughs> and he sang the same verse. We just one verse every time. Now, so I remember being up there and like getting to the solo and stuff and be like, I just got just 45 minutes, got up 45 minutes. And then I woke up at home. Wow. <laughs> just blacked out. Now. With homeboy up on the microphone. We're going to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Like we were both just, oh, so and just drunk and which is, you know, that was a little bit of a wake up call. To be like, dude, so now that's, that's not message. the worst part. This is the worst part. I come back the next day to tear down. Normally, and so at a normal gig, say if I'm playing a two-nighter or something, you'll leave everything set up, but you'll put your guitar away and <gasps> take it with you, you oh, know? no. I get back. Not only is my guitar out on the stand, plugged in, everything's on. The no sound shit. system is on. <laughs> you guys just <laughs> bailed. We just left. Like, that's it. We're out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so I got to thinking about that too. And I was Groupies, like, take care of the shit for like, us. You can't. Oh, that was the worst teardown ever. I was so hungover. Every time I would, you know, like, you know, like when you bend over, when you're hungover, you've got a headache or something and you bend yeah. over to pick something up and you can just, just stand your head up. just throbbing. Oh, yeah. That second you stand up, you're like, oh, oh damn, every it's... time I would lean down to like wrap a cable oh. or something, I'd be like oh. a normal teardown. And again, I played with a bunch of different groups and you get a good teardown. Um, it shouldn't, you know, when you got your system down. Hut, hut, hut. It oh, doesn't yeah. take very long. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do and stuff. That teardown took forever. It took like two and a half hours. <laughs> this was like a two-man show. Oh, I bet you were miserable oh, every minute of the way, horrible, too. Horrible, man. Horrible. <laughs> but 
But yeah, I mean, I should. Um, so I don't really do a lot of that now. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. wrong. Like, I do love having a beer at a show, man. That's oh, yeah. that's fantastic. And there's something about that first one when you get on stage and you have a beer. That That's well, great. Keep but, in mind you're having a bottle of beer and not an entire glass of tequila. Yeah, right. Well, that's just it, too. I mean, granted, you drink a lot of craft beers now and there. You're looking at... Um, Pretty high alcohol content for some of them. So yeah. it can, you know, can it can be tricky. Get up to like ten percent on them damn things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're delicious, but <laughs> but now, yeah. True. So I, you know, try to be a professional now, and I should plug who I'm playing with now. I guess too, huh? Yeah, um, who are you playing with? Them? Yeah. So I've got a jazz and classical guitar duo, twelve strings. Again, I mentioned that. So that's with Eric Martin's monster player. Um, What's the website? Uh, that is twelve strings guitar dot com. Nice. And then you can request info. You can book. You can can book. You can do the info. There's some YouTube videos of us playing so you can hear what we sound like. What's Um, the YouTube channel? uh, Just 12 strings. Just 12 strings. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess. And if you're looking for lessons, you can go to guitarbychris.com. That's my website. Now, is Um, that that's guitarbychris.com? Yep. Okay. Just straight up guitarbychris and Chris is with a C-H. Okay. Um, And then... So besides the jazz duo, and the nice thing about the jazz classical duo is we um, you're reading a lot of charts, a lot of the music is in front of you and stuff, so you can sub people in and out if you have to, which okay. has been really nice. So if Eric can't make a gig, um, I've been fortunate enough to play with a couple other really fantastic guitar players in town. Connor Lee is one of them, monster player too. Um, now, when you do that, when you switch players out, does the style change? Yeah, yeah, actually, so, it does. Like so, Eric is, you said Eric was heavy into uh, well, he's, he's, I jazz, mean, we're still right? doing jazz tunes, but the way everybody plays is a little bit different. If I were to compare Connor's playing to Eric playing, Eric's playing, it's different. Yeah. And it's fun being able to be like, oh, you know, it's, we could take the same tune, but we're going to play it differently right. depending upon who's doing it. Because you guys come from different it. paths. You yeah, learn yeah. different ways. Yeah. That's just it. Um, so it's been really fun. And again, I've learned a lot from playing with those guys. Um, and then besides that, um, I'm now currently playing guitar with the Gina Powers Band, which is um, obviously Gina Powers <laughs> and myself and the bass player from my old band, the Cedo and Tover Show. Mitch Rittenbaugh is playing bass. That's how I got into this band. They needed a guitar player, and he threw my name out there. And it's always fun playing with that dude. That dude. He uh, he was with my old band for about, what did we play together? For almost seven years. Okay. So, you know, you, you can just telepathically send a message to each other and be like, I know what he's going to do. <laughs> That's super fun. I believe you. that. I believe that when playing music, especially when playing music. You know, you guys play with the and play to knit side to side. Well, you know their style enough, um, and you've heard them play enough, and you've done, you know, maybe if you're doing tunes you've done before, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember how we always used to do that on this part of the song. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been super fun. Um, that is theginapowersband.com is the okay. website for that. <laughs> it's fantastic when you can get the domain name you want. <laughs> right. You know? Oh, dude, you that was another... To- that was another thing we talked about in my first podcast. Where, the domains? Right, because it, it was nowhere even remotely close to RumorCast when I first started all of this. What What were you going to be? A uh, long time ago, long time ago, uh, back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't even know if I want to know like half of the names you're like that you were gonna throw. Out oh, there. dude, you've got to listen to that first episode because it even got to a point where my best friend Andy was making up just obnoxiously stupid fucking names just to fuck with my head, and I'd be like, well, "I'll, I'll give it some thought," you know, <laughs> just like try to be polite. But he's like, "You dumbass," you know what I mean? But uh, it was originally gonna be called Opinionated. Was that taken? Uh, well, okay. So opinionated, even though it's like not a very common word, uh, it's still common enough to where like the dot com, the dot. That oh was taken. yeah, man. But but the dot me was available. So opinionated dot me. How perfect is that, right? Yeah, but nobody types dot me. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> but it was still. I was like, okay, cool. I can roll with that. I could. I'll make that work. I'll fucking make that work. And then I found out not only was that name taken, um, 
there was already a podcast oh, called Opinionated, and all it was was four guys that sat around and watched movies. And it's like, okay, hold on. And mind you, I'm being biased because I haven't listened to their fucking show. Their show is probably fucking great. It, it <laughs> but, probably is. But I have a personal bias against them now because it's like, okay, you fuckers sit there and you watch movies. Watch <laughs> movies. Like, what, what do they do back in the 50s? Like, oh, yeah, we're going to sit around and watch the radio. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just commentary on movies. Right, right. No, that's, I don't know if you look at like YouTube and the whole, like box package opening is a big thing. Oh yeah, Little open kids boxing. Love that stuff, man. There's that, and then the mystery box buying. There's yeah. that one. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of dumb shit on YouTube. Um, like, why is this entertaining? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you go down the rabbit hole, man. Like I said, I do a lot of podcast stuff on there, but there's also like, um, as far as music people, you got to check out a dude named Rick Beato. Rick Beato. Yeah, he does. I mean, he's got a lot of really good guitar lessons stuff, but he also okay. talks about like what makes this song great. And so he'll take a tune like Master of Puppets and break it down. He'll start at the beginning and like pull up, be like, okay, here's just the guitar line by itself and talk about what's going on. And it's really cool, man. Um, the Science of Metallica oh, by oh, dude, Rick he whatever. Like, he, Rick Beato. Rick he does Beato. like Fleetwood Mac tunes, Steely Dan. I mean, he's all over the place with it. So check that out. Okay. Um, I should plug just a little bit more. Though, Go for it, man. Again, yeah. Like I said, Gina Powers Band, you should definitely check that out if you haven't. Um, kind of folky Americana, some original, okay. some cover. Um, actually, we're playing at the fair coming up here on the 14th, so if you feel like heading out to the beer garden, we'll be there. Um and actually, that Not weekend, 100%. okay, we'll be at the M and J. Yeah, just putting the pressure on Phil. Down. You need to get this shit out in a couple days, Phil. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> I mean, we we got stuff coming up in the future, but you can always check out the GinaPowersBand dot com to see where we're going to be playing. Um, and then I also sub in with another group called the Downtown Horns, out of Grand Forks. What kind of music is, is that? Um, so think think like Chicago. Oh, or, okay. Uh, a lot of Van Morrison stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. it's fun. You're talking nine people. In the group, um, nine people. Wow. Yeah, because you, you know you've got saxophone and trumpet and trombone, and then oh, two guitars and keyboard and drums and bass and um, so it, that's a fun group. Again, like that's something where I only sub in when their guitar player uh, can't make it. But I actually did a gig with them this past weekend up in Hamilton, North Dakota. Hamilton. It's so. What the uh, fuck is it's Hamilton? It's <laughs> way up north, man. So if you're thinking like, uh, do you know where, if you take Interstate, I-29, mm -hmm. straight north, have you ever gone up to like Grafton? Oh, I've been to Pembina. Yeah, I've it's, been all it's, up it's there. It was the Grafton. Pembina County Fair is what oh, we were playing. Oh, okay, so it's in okay. that area. Gotcha. Um, okay. When, and it was, uh, and this is another thing too. I'm not saying this was a bad thing. This was just a case of like, after you play enough shows, um, you... I, no gig is ever going to go 100% perfectly. Oh, I mean, there are some, but you just learn how to roll with the punches. And there's really no sense in be showing up and like getting pissed off if something doesn't go your way. Mm -hmm. um, so prime example, like we get there and, and our stage is a, a truck or, you know, a flatbed trailer. <laughs> Sounds about right for that area. Right, right. <laughs> um, and which wasn't bad. I played on those before and we, we made it work. And then the load in was weird because you had to drive. They had hor They had chariot racing before chariot racing that shit so oh <laughs> at my first God. when you're like chariot racing but when you actually see it i was like it was really cool <laughs> oh <my laughs> it was really i would wow. i would have liked to have seen a little bit more like spartacus action okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, throw the spear yeah they were all very, they were all very civil <laughs> mm -hmm. um but then they had like at cart racing too where they had a team of four horses four horsepower um and that was they were Booking it, man. <laughs> well, you mean like the old carriages, like in the yeah, Western days yeah. type cards? Yeah, like stagecoach. A oh little bit smaller, God. but yeah, just oh. cooking. <laughs> so anyway, though, you're pulling up to this trailer, and it's, so it's like you're on a dirt track, essentially, and you're trying to roll things that are on casters. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know? um, That's no bueno. You know, and, and thunderstorms are rolling in later in the evening and whatnot. And it, like I said, it was a fantastic gig. The crowd was great. It was a lot of fun. But you're always going to have something pop up that maybe you weren't expecting and you know the more you do it obviously you try to let that not fluster you just play um right. so anytime i get to play with them it's always a treat because for one 
it's not very often that I get to rock out to Chicago tunes and right. have a full horn section. Oh, oh yeah, that there's something awesome about. Oh, that, that's got to be badass just having it, that back. It really you is. It really is. They're playing. You know, again, a lot of those Van Morrison tunes have the horns in there, and it just sounds fantastic. And the cool <laughs> thing too is, so the, the the two saxophone players, the um, our sisters, and they both do some vocal stuff too. So you have. I always think it's really cool when you have a group that um, has more than one singer. Okay. It's because I think it's easier on the listener's ear to be like, oh, oh, now we get a change of voice too. Fantastic. You know, so we go from a male voice singing and then you have a female voice singing and then you, you know, harmonies with both male and female vocals. So you've got a very wide range you can cover. So again, great group, really cool. Um, like I said, a lot of fun to play with. A lot of options. Yeah, I've been pretty fortunate, man, to tell you the truth as far as um, being able to gig and play music for a living. Like, I mean, I teach and play music, and that's what I do. So I asked you about a bad gig, and now I want to hear about a bad student. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> um, no I will, names, no, no anything no. like and that. And I'll say I'm, right now, like, everybody in my studio is good. Um, they're all at different levels of playing but they all work hard, which is fantastic. Well, I don't mean students specifically as in in the school. I mean, it could be anybody. Oh, I well, I mean, I've had, <laughs> so I've had people show up. I generally, so I will do a free introductory lesson. I think that's a good thing to do as a teacher. I think it's a good thing to look for as a student as well because for sure you can, and I, I feel like I'm just repeating my pitch that on the phone when I repeat I'm talking to the people. pitch, man. But, so <laughs> when you are looking for a teacher, you could have someone who is the best player in the world or the best teacher in the world. But if you don't get along, it's, right, you're, it's not going to work. You know. So Mike, right. tone it down. <laughs> no, no, he's. <laughs> no, again, I'm Mike. just kidding. I'm kidding, Mike. I'm yeah, kidding. Right? I don't come he pounding just on my come door. and crush you. You don't know anything about music. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> no, and that's the thing too. Is like, again, someone even as you know, he was a pretty hardcore teacher, but. That was perfect for me. That was the personality I needed. Right. Had I had someone who was like, you're doing a good job, Chris. Good job. And I'm like, I'm playing like shit, dude. <laughs> uh, you, you are not. You're, you're making me worse by telling me I'm doing a good job. But it's job all right about now. trying. Here's your participation yeah, trophy. Yeah, that, that does not work. <laughs> um, but, I mean, so going back to this, like, consultation thing, there's a reason I do that, too, because I would also like to see what kind of student you're going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, now, interview basically and i'm not at the point where i'm going to be like i'm sorry buddy get get out of here you, know, wow. you, yeah, you, you, you but... smell bad um <laughs> you know but i have had people come in and i you can tell there's a certain kind of student that comes in right away and when they say things like show me the fastest thing you can play no like, way yeah then <laughs> that's when i'm like I don't think I'm the right teacher for you. Yeah, show me anything you can play. Yeah, well, or like, <laughs> I mean, I've had people come in too where they're like, well, I want to learn how to play this song, but but I, no, I don't need to learn the chords. I'm like, you, dude. Wow. <laughs> dude, you have to, you're basically telling me right now that like, you're like, I, dude, I want to be a really good writer, but I don't want to have to know grammar. Right, <laughs> right exactly. I, you know, that's that's what I'm looking yeah, for right yeah. I now. I want to write a book, but words aren't important. Yeah, words are not important <laughs> at all. So, I mean, I've had students like that um, that generally either I persuade them to maybe study with someone else. Well, and actually the same, one of the same people. <laughs> this, yes. This guy. <laughs> I mean, I had a student once too where it was like, and again, you you know right away so one of the things I do nowadays, too, is I charge on a monthly basis. I think that was a smart yep. business move just because you, when you charge lesson per lesson, you tend to get people that it's easy to not show up. Right. Holds if, you accountable. It, it really does. Um, if you're like, Ooh, I already paid for those lesson. I'm out this much money if I, I don't go. Well, again, I've had people, too, where it's the same dude, the fastest you can play thing. But like, <laughs> well, I didn't know I didn't. I forgot, I forgot my checkbook, so can I just get you next time? And most people are good about that, where I'm like, yeah, that's right. fine. And especially if, if you've been coming to me for a while, I'm not going to beat you up over, like, it's the first. <laughs> Tony, get his fucking legs. <laughs> it's right. It's the first today. Um, it makes me think of the movie Kingpin. Yeah. My rent's <laughs> <you> due. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Maybe we can work something out. 
Um, but same thing, like, oh, my car broke down. Can you come pick me up for my lesson? No. <laughs> wow. I'm I, not no, your dad, kid. No, I can't do that. <laughs> like, I mean, and you get to a point where when I first started teaching, there was a lot of stuff I was willing to do. And the older I get and the more I've been teaching, you start to realize that you're not doing yourself any favors um, by like, yeah, sure, I'll come and pick you up. It's like, no, I need I need you to be serious right. and I'll be serious because – you know, this is, I'm, I'm running a business. And that's one of the hard things I think too about, well, any kind of art for that matter. Um, Have you ever gotten any, I'll pay you an exposure. Oh, geez. So that actually <laughs> makes it, I'm glad you said that because um, there's a. You'll get so many views, Chris. When, Come when, on. when you say I'll pay you an exposure, it makes me think of another NDSU guy, Bill Law. Um, he's been around Fargo forever too. Great bass player. Um, He's in the music department up there in the Chally School of Music. And he would always say, <laughs> when people would be like, oh, it's, it's great exposure. You can die from exposure. Uh, yes, <laughs> that is a good And I answer. think that anytime somebody says exposure, that is the first thing that comes to my mind. Is, you can die from exposure, dude. <laughs> that's um, right. That door swings both ways, bro. It, it really does. And, and that's something, too, that I've learned over the years is um, I think one of the best things – I'm, I'm reading this cap. It's like, cheers. Um, oh, as I a know, musician, right? <laughs> is not, um, I mean, obviously you got to be great at your instrument and you should be enthusiastic about what you're doing and, and always be a professional. But learning when to say no has been a really, a really good skill too. Oh, yeah. um, I think that probably applies to a lot of different places in life. Any job you might have. I have a hard time doing that. Yeah. I'm yeah. so awful at that. Well, it's, it's I know sp- it exists. Like, I know it's like, damn it, Phil, you've really got to get on point on saying no. Right. And it's just, uh, yeah. Well, and, you know, because I, I think about that, like, when it comes to when you're going to take a gig or something, um, you have to ask yourself, well, one, is it obviously, again, if you're out there and you're making a living off of your music, you do have to ask yourself, and I shouldn't even feel apologetic for this. This is how ingrained it is at this point when people are like, oh, you play music? Well, what's your real job? Ouch. Kicking your ass. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously. <my> job. <laughs> um, you know, but no, this is my real job, man. So I look at it again. You got to look at it the same way you would look at plumbing or an electrician or a lawyer or any other career out there. Um, you should take it seriously. So you do have to think of the financial aspect of it because if you don't, you play too many gigs and you don't get paid, well, then you don't eat or have a place to live. Um, so when I'm looking <laughs> at gigs, you know, it's like, well, you do want to see, is it going to be, um, f- you know, financially, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it going to help you out financially, I guess? Right. Um, or is it going to be a great, because I will look at a networking opportunity as very worthwhile. Um, because a lot of it, you know how that goes. That's not oh, just yeah. music either. Good old fashioned American Anything. know who. Yeah, shaking um, hands, rubbing elbows. Y- who you know really helps a lot too. Oh, yeah. um, or is it just going to be a really fun group of musicians to play with? Because that to me is worth it too to be like, man, you know, um, maybe I wouldn't normally do this, but oh, that's, a, that's a good lineup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> <Right>. lineup. <laughs> and that's going to be a lot of fun. And then it might lead to something else in the future too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I, I tend to think that people look at any career in the arts as not a real career. <laughs> you know, or like, oh, you do this for a living? Yes. Well, I've always looked at it as complicated because it's a very unique like even if you go from music to actual art you know it's a very complicated you know specific field to be in you got to bust your ass man yeah and you got to be good at what you do and like i said i've been fortunate to have fantastic teachers um to know some really great musicians out there um that have helped me on my way too you know and to learn a lot from people i think that's a big part of it too is always being willing to well keeping in mind that you really don't know it all you know and, and, <laughs> right. and, that, and that's hard to do sometimes but like talking to other musicians be like well how do you handle this or this or how do you do this or that and most people i found have and especially like the fargo area is actually there's a 
a lot of musicians around here, man. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of fantastic musicians around here, and a lot of um, really nice to work with and very open about the business side of it, too, is like, you know, well, maybe you should try doing this or maybe you should do that. I can't think of any time like I've been directly sabotaged, which is great. You know? <laughs> <That's good. laughs> they throw this asshole <laughs> under the bus. Oh. I don't like his face. <laughs> that's, that's good. God damn it, Chris. That would have made a good story. Though. It really would have. I've, <laughs> I've had some really good experiences with musicians around town, which is fantastic. Again, it's um, and, you know, you got to think of it that way, too, where it's like. The more of us that succeed, it makes it easier for other ones to succeed. If you keep a thriving music sure. community going and you're like, nah, we're drawing people in and stuff, then it makes it easier right. for other musicians to do better. So, And I hate it when I hear people like, oh, there's nothing in Fargo. Like, a lot of stuff fuck to do. that. Yeah. I mean, two of the biggest things here is music and food. Well, like, and big time. And alcohol. We can't forget that. There's we, a lot of craft brewers in town. Yeah. And so there is a lot going. I mean, I could understand if you are not 21. You know, and right. winter, dude, winter gets rough. Even if there is stuff to do, you <laughs> got to make yourself go outside. Oh, my God, dude. We had such a bad winter this year. Holy shit. You know, I was, uh, I was pretty bummed out by the end of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so depressed. <laughs> I was just mad by February. I was like, this is some fucking bullshit right now. Oh, man. Oh, is this bullshit. <laughs> I was commuting to Valley City twice a week. Oh, I am not and, jealous of you. Um, it, You know, I was pretty fortunate, though, that most of the days that I went, it was actually okay. Mm. I had a couple times where I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not oh, happy fuck, man. We were getting road. bombarded, dude. There was one point, dude, there were like 12-foot snow drifts <laughs> out in front of my house. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you kidding me? We had a 20 foot snow drift in between the townhomes here. Fucking 20 <laughs> foot snow drift. I could handle. <laughs> I've lived in North Dakota all my life. Um, and I can't complain again. There's a lot of things I absolutely love around your cost of living. It's fairly low. The crime right. rate is pretty low. Oh, yeah. I like things like that. Um, but. That doesn't excuse you. That, that's not like, oh, I can't bitch about winter. Yes. No, you, you can, can bitch, bitch about cold. winter. It's, yeah. it's not even the cold. <laughs> it's not the snow. It's the dark that just crushes my spirit, dude. We kind of turn into Alaska a little bit. It's, yeah, it's, you're like, oh, man, okay, I'm getting up. You get that it's gray dark. gloom. By the time I'm getting home, it's dark. Oh, yeah. Sun comes up at like 830, yeah, goes down but, at like 430. But the summertime, man. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm just jacked in the summertime. Oh yeah, look at the time right now. It's like quarter after nine. And there's still daylight out. It, it's fantastic. Like the sun <laughs> comes up super early. I wake up super early. I'm like, ah, just mm -hmm. ready to go all day. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it makes up for the winter most times. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love like Fargo. The, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's a it's a good town, man. It's a good city. Um. It's like it's a big small town. It is. <laughs> well, I it's look at growing it. so fucking fast, though. That's true. That's all true, the development man. to the southwest is insane. Um, how long have you been here? Mm. I've lived here since. Uh, let's see. It would have been April of 2016. I moved here from Saint Cloud, and then uh, I lived in Saint Cloud for. About two years, and before that, I lived. God, unfortunately, I lived in. The, no, no, that would have been fortunately because me and Jim would have been homeboys. So, <laughs> uh, no, I, I lived in a small, small, small town, uh, Belgrade and Bruton, and like, what? What's small to you? Seven hundred people. Oh, do my hometown is like. What, less than 400? Oh, that's a cool story, bro. Here's your participation <laughs> yeah, trophy. <right? laughs> so, yeah, I feel you, man. Oh, yeah. How well, many bars did you have? 18? Two. We had two. <laughs> we had two bars. Uh, we had the VFW because every one of those small towns has a VFW <laughs> in it. And then uh, whatever no-name bar, just or I'm sorry, not no-name, but generic bar that you can think of. So, in our case, it was Brothers. Brothers Bar, you know, nothing unique about it at all. Um but there was a town called Padua that was to the northwest of us that the population there was nine. And literally nice. all it was was a house, a bar, and a church on a four-way stop. And that was it. Yep. That's <laughs> and, all you need, man. And the, the family of nine lived in the <laughs> house. 
<laughs> they owned the bar and they went to the church. <laughs> that actually makes me think of, I went to play a gig one time. This was with Soul Patch Adams years ago. So we had, for a brief stint, we had a drummer and a bass player. Um, our drummer, Sir Captain Dr. Mr. Tooth, was like... Hold on, back up. <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> Sir Captain Dr. Mr. Tooth. Um, Noted. <laughs> Guy, he was a drummer. His actual last name was Ludwig, which is crazy. <laughs> a drummer named Ludwig. Um, but nice. I, I want to say the name of the town is Branford. And we're like, we got a gig in Branford. Like, okay. And we show up there. What state? This is North Dakota. It's out by okay. New Rockford area. Okay. Um, and so we show up. Is it Branford? Binford? I feel bad. Binford was the uh, tool time. Right. There is a brand. <laughs> yeah. There is another Binford I think, in North Dakota as well. Um, but I, <laughs> <laughs> you're dating yourself there. Man. I know. Right. I regret <laughs> say I regretted saying that the moment I said yeah, it, I was yeah. like, damn it, dude, <laughs> that does not belong yeah, on this show. We'll catch it in post. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. We're just going to cut uh, that shit out. <laughs> well, we show up to this gig. I'm going to use the term gig loosely because this town is three trailer houses. Oh, shit. And one of the trailer houses was the gutted out trailer house in which we were going to play. Oh, that is like Red Flag City. Yeah, it really was. (laughs) Um, How many people showed up? Well, What's her face and all her cousins? It was mostly like a big house party. (laughs) So it wasn't really bad, but at the same and I remember drinking like homemade moonshine. Oh, um, my God. You are a brave soul. I'm surprised I didn't go blind. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'm surprised you woke up. <laughs> it was a... Yeah, I'm, that was... I'm a, surprised you didn't run into some Hills Have Eyes bullshit. Yeah, that was... It was... Well, everybody there was actually really nice. But for the most part, I was like, man, this is weird. This is sketchy, dude. Like, this, we're in a trailer house in the middle of nowhere. Um, but was the money good? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. It was like the drummer's cousin or his brother's place. Like, yeah, you, don't don't tell me you got us a gig, dude. When <laughs> oh no, but I don't know. Again, that's part of the game, man. I'm doing Billy Bob a favor. That that is part of the game. I mm-hmm. I feel like um you you gain some XP points. Now watch, <laughs> you know, five years from this podcast, a cousin. Of that gig is going to remember your performance. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, hey, I got this big venue for you. Right. It's a there, stadium of 20,000. <laughs> turns out he, he won the lottery or something. Right. I'm in his will because we, <laughs> we played at this gig. He's like, oh, man, you just, you played, you played Skinner, and that's what I wanted to hear. I, I just, that night. <laughs> we've got, we've got a connection, Chris. <laughs> that night turned my life around. <laughs> yeah. um, you told me I was drinking too much, and I stopped. And I didn't marry my sister. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite that <laughs> that rednecky. <laughs> was, That's good. No, I'm glad to hear you say yeah, that. It was, like I said, it was North Dakota is not Bama. <laughs> no, no, it's. <laughs> It, I'm like, sorry, anybody it, from Alabama that's listening to this. It's a stigma. <laughs> I'm sorry, but until you all stop, <laughs> when you stop, I'll stop. <laughs> it turned out to be a good time. But, again, one of those where you never know what you're, what's going to be waiting for you when you show up. Again, most deal. gigs I've played in the last couple of years, I suppose, um, I, I haven't had any huge surprises where I'm like, Oh, just wait. Um, yeah, it won't. It'll happen now. <laughs> right. But yeah, I don't know. Like I said, that's par for the course, man. You you kind of take that in stride as as you go along. Again, I'm not. You know, it, I think it's a different story if you're packing arenas. Then you're not necessarily dealing with that. And if then you're you just are, asking for it. Well, like if you're packing arenas, you're living that lifestyle. Like just like you, you know, plugged crew earlier. Like you know, <laughs> they're known for some. I, disastrous stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't. But know at that how. point, you know, you don't care. It's just like the fuck you money we were talking about earlier, <laughs> right? I, you know, I can't imagine that. And that's a, like, I feel at my age now, I could probably watch you. Like all of a sudden, you get famous, and then I'm dead six months later. Um, <laughs> but he just really went off the deep end, man. Yeah, this um, guy. Do I need to turn the light down in the yeah, room? Sure. Right. Dark. Um, <laughs> 
I think I could handle it better now. Having a bunch of money that is not necessarily, I don't think I would handle excessive fame very well. That would drive me insane, man. I like me time, you know, and I like, I, I like being anonymous. I don't think I could deal with everybody knowing you. Ugh. That's actually a fear of mine with this, with this podcast, like going viral. I get uh, worried keep dreaming, about that. buddy. <laughs> no, I know. It's like, see, this is like, okay, so this, this right now, this is like therapy for me. You know what I mean? This is like my thing. This is like my thing. Somebody listens fight. to this. They're like, are these guys right. like, are they friends or are they actually like, hey, are they really, really not? Like I've got really my 46 all. subscribers. Apparently they're fucking happy. I'm happy. We're all good to go. That's where you got to start, man. Well, Somewhere. Right. But I mean, what happens if like. This is my. This is one of my biggest fears with this podcast. Is like, let's say hypothetically, somebody like Joe Rogan finds it, yeah, loves it, mentions it, dude. That's three million people right out the fucking yeah. gate. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Keep pumping out quality content. Yeah, right. That's all you can do. Seriously, yeah. you know, I'm a month in between episodes. Yeah, right now. I haven't even broken the barrier. Did you know there's a barrier for this? I did not. Yeah, they they call it uh, the eight episode barrier. So if you can make it past eight episodes, you're doing good. What uh, what number are you on right now? What am I? Number five. Oh yeah, we can we can find you some more people to come, some interesting characters. Well, I actually have three episodes on the back burner. That oh I'm good, on good, good. Because it's good. me and my best friend Andy. Because we were field technicians for a while. Yeah, yeah, I, I know you. So many good stories from that. So that's three <laughs> episodes right there alone. I can think of one off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so, but anyway, um, I actually have another one that I'm super, super excited before because this came way out of left field, like something I and is actually related to you. Um, it's a like, musical. Personally, or just my field? Your field. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not, not like you know this person, um, but your field. Uh, she actually produced her own song, and it's, and it's really, really good. Uh, and it's like studio quality. It's her own track. You know, she's got it up on YouTube, and I'm not going to give any of the details. I'm going to save that for her. But, uh, yeah, I've got that one coming up here in, Local? in a few days. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, St. Cloud area. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll show you all the stuff after this episode. Sorry, people. You're just going to have to fucking wait. It's a, uh, that's another thing too. Like when, you know, we started out talking about technology, but how far that's come as far as you can, you can do it all yourself now. Right. This didn't take, I, I mean, it, it kind of dented my wallet a little bit, but it wasn't that bad. And learning how to do it, I'm still, I'm still learning. I mean, I'm, I got that thought in my head, like I'm going to get like maybe 30, 40 episodes in and I'm going to go back and listen to the first episode and just fucking cringe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Dude, it's a, go watch the first episode of The Simpsons. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know? That's exactly how I'm picturing it. Or the, or the, or the like, first South Park, man. <laughs> and then you can't delete it because it's like iconic. It's you, like, you, oh, you, that's yeah, the first you, episode. No, you've got to have it. Again, I don't know. That's the thing, too, is like. You talk about like gigs and stuff or bad gigs or, you know, early on gigs or early on teaching stuff like that. It, it's only worthless if you didn't learn something from it. Right. You know, as long as you took away something like either, okay, this was good. This was good. This we will never do again. Right. I, you know, again, the place we went to where the owner was just drunk when we showed up, <laughs> we got done with that gig and they were hostile at the end of the night. That was one too, where oh, I was shit. like, we got to pack up fast and I just want to leave, dude. I want to leave because was this before or after you got payment? Fortunately, after um, no, the guy's wife paid us oh, at, so like, lucky. at like nine 30 that oh, night. she came up the, and paid us right oh, away. Oh, oh, that's so, awesome. And cash too, which was, that was primo. Awesome. <laughs> um, but, it was one of those gigs where you're like, God, there's only like five people left in the bar. And, and, and it probably wasn't going to happen, but you get that feeling of like, this is where somebody comes and puts a broom handle through the door, you know, and it's like, <laughs> don't let these boys out of here because we're going to teach them a lesson yeah, that's right. about sassing us. Um, you're so G-rated right now. I love it. Right, I'm, i got to put on a good persona for my students. Yeah, I try, man. I, I No, you're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing I, good. Just point this, the finger at me like, dude, this guy is No, this is crazy. one of those things, too, where like I think about it where um, I've heard my dad say the F word three times in my life. Wait, hold the hell up. Three times? Only three times. And three. Uh, apparently my 
<laughs> my, and this will come back around again. This is just about, <laughs> how we got here. Is just I am because so trying to, trying to keep it G rated. God, your but, dad listens to this. But he uh, apparently he used to swear a ton back in the day. My mom was telling me like, yeah, he yeah cussed all the time. But you know, you get kids. And you probably got to tone it down a <laughs> yeah, little yeah, bit. You Again, turn another it down. friend of mine, they were changing his kid's diaper and like F bomb with a hard CK at the end. Oh. <laughs> and it's because every time he opens that dirty diaper, that's the first thing he says. Uh-huh. You know, so you, you got to stop swearing. But the only. <laughs> So I think about that now. I'm trying to keep it clean. Now I will tell you, like one time was when he was telling me a joke. The other two times, one of them was we had. You know, I grew up on a not like we didn't farm or anything, but there's my folks have a big old like ten acre plot of land and house okay. ranch to house out in the country. It's great, nice. love it out there, super relaxing. But we were clearing trees out of the like dead wood out of the shelter belt, and my brother and my dad had this big old log and they were going to throw it on the burn pile and like there was a you know you got this huge log and then there's a branch coming around the back that kind of hooked around well as they throw this thing <laughs> this branch clips my dad in the back of the head. <laughs> and so that was the first time i heard him say that song. <laughs> the second time was um we were putting in a new toilet into the bathroom and you know like to if you've had a toilet that's been there for a while, it's hard to get everything off and yeah. thrust it into place and whatnot. So he's my old man. That is my dad. He's banging on this with a rubber mallet or something, trying to get the seal to break, break the and, loose, yeah. and, and pick it up. Well, every time he's hitting this now, you look up, you see this light fixture here. Yeah. Now this one's screwed on in the center. This wasn't one of those. This, you know, those like bulb ones where you have the two little screws oh, on, yeah, the on the side the top. that yeah, hold yeah. it in. So he's like, no, <laughs> and the light fixture shaking, and finally, <laughs> oh no! I didn't laugh about this, but he wham hits this thing, and the light fixture comes down and cracks over the top. Of his head. <laughs> I do not blame that man one no, bit. That was that was the other time I heard him say an F bam, and like he cut his head open, oh. and he's bleeding. And this is how you know, like my parents have been married for what they're going on 41, 42 years now, forty two years I think. Um, this is how you know they've been married a long time. Because my mom's like, stand on the linoleum because we don't want you bleeding on the carpet. Now that's love right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> he probably should have gone in and got stitches. He just put some tape on it. Um, it's a forehead. Get the tuss and it'll be fine. You know. Well, and that's the thing too. It's like, well, when, I guess that's one plus side about being bald. Then you know you can actually put something, stitch your head up like that with True. some tape, and you don't have to. You know, you oh, know yeah. the pain. Oh yeah. The worst part is sunburning the top of your head, man. Oh, um, God, that is awful. You can. <laughs> this is off topic. You can go bald two ways, man. You can go gracefully bald, or you can just accept it. But I mean, you can go like Bruce Willis bald, and like, all right, I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna rock the bald head. Yeah. Um, or you can do the nasty comb over, and that's 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 not helping. I'll never do out. that. Yeah, uh, no. short hair, man. I had a friend yeah. of mine. I remember being like, "Man, losing my hair," and he's like, "Well, I got some advice for you. Then that's uh, buy some more hats." <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, I've gotten lazy on my couple head, f bombs in the. <laughs> Way to go, Dad. Well deserved. But yeah. Nobody well, blames you, pops. <laughs> no, 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 no. But that's the thing. Like I, you know, again, I probably. I still swear a lot, I guess, now that I think about it more than I should, but not in a teaching situation. Um, well, of course. <laughs> I would hope right. not. No, uh, I mean, there's, you feel people out, you know, and what oh, you can yeah. and can't say. I don't get, like, vulgar by any means. Well, right, but I mean, um, with a 12-year-old. Yeah, you're going to keep it guitar clean. student. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, I mean, obviously. you know, but I have more, a couple, well, I actually, it's really nice because I've got students that span all the way from, how old's my youngest? Nine at this point. 10 now so 10 all the way up into the mid 60s which is really cool um mid 60s yeah um new student or no i've refreshing uh, um some of them are people that have been playing for a while and they're just like okay it's time for me to i've reached a point where i just i can't go any farther um I did have some that are like, I've, you know, this has been a dream of mine for a long time. And I figured if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. Right. So that's really cool. I, I love that. teaching. Um, I love teaching adults like that too. And the nice thing is it's fun when you get people um, like retired folks 
we take lessons during the daytime for one. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of times too, they're generally, they're looking for something to do too, because they're not working anymore. So they put the time in and practice. That's the big thing. Like having a student that practices that uh, that's such a great feeling. You, you get people it's like, and you might not even be going anywhere as far as I have a lot of students that think they should be awesome immediately. Well, everything's hard at first, right? You know, it takes effort on something. Everything's that hard at first. You want to accomplish something great. You got to put in great effort. You do actually. <laughs> that's, that's funny. You bring that up. You should read a book called the book of five rings. Um, it sounds like a Tolkien book. It, it's, um, Musashi Miyamoto, the greatest swordsman of all history. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But he talks about that too. He's wielding the great sword with most people do it with two. You should do it with one. And it's not that hard at first. It's going to be hard, but everything is hard at first. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like it's, it's, it's cool to see the people that practice, man. That's fantastic. Um, oh, yeah. Or even if they don't practice a ton, but they just love the instrument. Is there a message you want to send your students? No, no, just keep practicing. <laughs> yeah, just, just keep, keep practicing. practicing. Just keep, keep practicing hammering. and know that it's going to be, um, that it takes time. And it'll but, be okay. Well, it if, if you put the time in, and that's the thing too, is like, because you will see people that feel like they're not making any progress. Um, obviously, everybody moves at their own pace, but... If you even if you're not, you might feel like you're not making a lot of progress, but you are. It's it's like losing weight. You know, if you weigh yourself every day, you're gonna be so disappointed. Right. But if you weigh yourself once a month, right, you're gonna be like, oh. oh okay. So when I see someone once a week, it's like I can see you're making progress. You mm -hmm. might feel like you're not getting better, but and that's what happens too. Sometimes you plateau for a while. You just got to push through that. Like, you. You can do it as long as you put the time in. That's the big thing. And focus time. That's the thing I should mention as well. Because I fall into that trap too. I'm like, I'm going to practice today. And I'm all over the place. Right. You're not doing any good. Man. Right. <laughs> you, you are exactly. much better off practicing one topic for this hour than like trying to get, you know, 15 different things in. Like focus on one thing. You'll It'll help the other things too. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting deal. I never would have pictured myself in my younger days as a teacher. And it's strange to find out that that's something I really like now. Weird. Well, you're happy. <laughs> yeah, you're happy. Weird how that, how that, yeah, you're teaching, out. you're playing gigs, you're doing good. That's yeah. I, I uh, plug your stuff again one more time. Okay. So all the things I'm doing, so <laughs> guitar lessons and like solo classical guitar performance. Um, that's me, Chris Argenziano. You can find my website at guitar by Chris dot com um and then i play with the jazz and classical duo 12 strings that is 12 strings guitar dot com for booking and samples of our music and just getting some more information i also play guitar with the gina powers band and that is the gina powers band dot com <laughs> um if i got that website wrong just search the gina powers band and she'll pop right up um and that's most of my stuff. Like I said, I sub with the Downtown Horns. You should check them out. That's the Downtown Horns. <laughs> dot com. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they are too. Keeping it um, simple. <laughs> but you can, you know, you can see videos of what I do on my Facebook page. I have a Chris Argenziano guitar Facebook page. I also have just the Chris Argenziano um, Instagram. Put a lot of videos up there. Mostly classical guitar stuff. Is it just stuff. at Chris Argenziano? Um, Topher Jens. Topher Jens. T-O-P-H-E-R-G-E-N-Z. Um, yeah. But that's a business page, too, so you can just go on there. And, and you, they everything. can find the links to stuff. Yep, on yep. Okay. And if you go to my website, all my social media links are on there as well. Nice. Um, right down at the bottom there. So, yeah, I try to keep it fresh on the Instagram page. At least post a couple videos every... That's where things are going. Things are going from Facebook to Instagram now. Instagram and Twitter. I, I'm a uh, Facebook kind of... It you know, <laughs> I I like it for a promotional tool. You know, it's nice being able to let that many people know about your shows. Back in the day, we had to wait till a concert was getting out and hand out tiny little flyers. Right? Yeah, you had to print those Screw out. And that, like man. here, you throw this away. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's basically what it was. Like, I'm not gonna come to your show. Why are you giving yeah. me garbage? 
<laughs> um, hang up a flyer at the right. supermarket. Maybe I'll see that. Um, but yeah, now with like social media, it makes it, I like that side of it. I mean, there's a lot of downsides I don't like, but I like the Instagram. That's something where, um, I don't know, it, it doesn't, doesn't bum me out as much. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. All right. Cool. Well, thanks for stopping in, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It was good. It was good. I'll have to get you back in here when you have your uh, first major story from things gone awry at a gig. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, man. Like I said, I would be... I thought about bringing a guitar today. I didn't really know what we were going to do. So I was like, well, should I bring a guitar and play something? But Oh, if you want to. Then I did. Maybe maybe next time. Next time for sure. I'll definitely have you back on again. Maybe... Depending upon how many mics you have, we'll just have to have the whole band come in. Oh, fuck, you, man. You are putting me on the spot on this podcast. I, like, I, whoa. Like, okay, Phil, you got to get this shit out tomorrow. Yep, yep. And you got to buy four more fucking microphones <laughs> for your studio that is a bedroom in a townhome. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was actually thinking about it, getting a third one because the uh, guest before you, his name was uh, Trevor. And uh, he races sprint cards. Oh, okay. And uh, he was talking about having his wife on. And I was like, you know, having a third mic right here at the end of this table would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Than having three people. Like, yeah, that would be. That's my next goal is to find three people to sit down. <laughs> oh, dude, I tell you what, man, though. There's, I get, you start, you're going down the rabbit hole now because it, it's the same <laughs> with music gear, man. Like, you buy something, you're like, <sighs> oh, dude, I got to, you know, building a, building a PA, man. Oh, Sweetwater <laughs> Sound loved me. Uh, yep. <laughs> so I was like, hey, you're going to give me what kind of credit limit on this card? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's an investment, man. It's, you want to build something, you got to you gotta start somewhere. Um, yeah, no, I got all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, this is perfect. I'm done for, like, the next however long. I'm good to go. And now I'm already, after, like, four or five episodes, I'm like, it's not enough. <laughs> I need more. <laughs> I want to get another table and put it the opposite L shape and then freaking get one or two more mics at the end. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 man, that would be cool. Like I said, it would be cool if you could start, you know, doing the musical guest thing then too because just have people play, man. Oh, I'm down. Yeah, for sure. And then the cameras. Got to have the cameras. Yeah, I'm looking into that. And oh, my God, dude, now you're talking some Money. serious. Oh, Wow, you know, there's like a webcam I was looking at that was like 150 bucks, and I'm like, that is super good quality. We could put it up on the wall over there. But I'm looking at all like the famous YouTubers and stuff like that. You, you they post their gear, and their gear is like five, six grand. I'm like, you are gotta be fucking kidding. But it's an investment, you know. And depending True. upon, depending upon, you know, if 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 you start being able to monetize this, then it's a tax deductible investment. True. But, but you got to get to that point. Monetize it first. You yeah. got to get to that point, man. Which I'll get there. Yeah, it's a one step at a time, baby steps. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> we have one <laughs> more to come. All right, cool. Sounds good. Well, thank you for coming out again, and uh, we'll definitely get you on here again, and we'll figure out that band thing for sure. Right on. All right, guys, take care, and we'll talk to you later. As usual, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, You guys are awesome. And we will see you for the next one. Take care, guys.